welcome back all of you nana here and then we are into the next day session of this uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation so we are now going ahead on this now fine we have completed your uh, average costing and then uh, we have completed the receipt accounting as well as the cost accounting and then the cost accounting we have seen about the miscellaneous receipt issues and then afterwards we are now seeing the sub inventory transfers <clears throat> And then we have seen the interop transfers as well as the transfer orders. So there are four accounting entries for interop transfers as well as uh, uh, transfer orders. Right. So those mapping sets you have to what happens? Uh, get it from financials because uh, the seeded ones uh, they normally don't use at all. In our company, they never use the seeded ones at all. They always have a custom mapping set for each and every. And then apart from that, uh, you will have to what uh, see the cyclic count adjustment and then uh, the physical inventory adjustments. Those mapping sets also are there. Don't worry. And then on the purchasing front, uh, apart from uh, your normal receipts, right, it will now get go via gate and then uh, what happens? You are delivering it. So uh, apart from that, you will be having what returns, corrections, and unordered receipts. <clears throat> For returns, corrections, and unordered receipts, you have to obtain the mapping set and then accordingly you have to put the uh, values together. So in EBS, it is not so. Everything is automatic actually. Here, everything is manual. So that is the only problem. And for order management accounting, we will not see during uh, order management lecture. <clears throat> so this is on the inventory and purchasing accounting. So there are four methods of costing. Fine. One is the average cost, and then one is the standard cost. Fine. Well, <clears throat> then one is the, the, the other two are what? LIFO and FIFO cost. So we are going to begin the LIFO and FIFO cost now. <clears throat> so let me share the screen. <clears throat> I'm going to go. You're going to begin LIFO and FIFO cost. So, yes, you see. So, this instance is working. So, what I'm planning is that on, on uh, Thursday, I will now start order management actually straight away. Instead of going for the other pillars, I will now start order management. So that uh, as long as this works well, fine, uh, we will be able to do it fast actually. Because we are now losing instances time and again actually, fine. that becomes a very difficult task. So okay, fine. We are now going to go for the LIFO FIFO cost. <clears throat> Let me go there. I will now go to the cost profiles. Fine, click set our maintenance. Let me go to the cost profile. <clears throat> so there is only one cost profile for both the LIFO and FIFO. Fine, I will now go on and show it to you. So go to search. <laughs> Match cost profiles. Had I had my own structure, I would have demonstrated everything on that. Now, fine. <laughs> Since I am now doing on uh, vision, fine. That is not a correct one at all. Fine. What to do? Fine. So, manage cost profiles. Whenever time and mood permits, I will now create one structure and then I will not demonstrate everything else. So, manage cost profiles. I will now go on and click on first. One. So, how to make a cost profile for uh, uh, your LIFO and FIFO? We will click on. I'm not doing it, but I am not showing you. I am common sense. I will not say something, 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 something. Here, costing method is what actual cost. So we are not seeing the perpetual average. There is average cost. We are seeing the standard cost. Now I'll not go and see the actual cost. Actual cost is for LIFO and FIFO. Actual cost will go there. For it. So once when you give it, what happens? You go down and then choose the valuation structure code. Right? Uh, so valuation structure code is uh, uh, what are the uh, um, US one uh, asset valuation. I'm doing enough. I'm working on it. And then go down and work on it. So here, provisional compliance, fine. Work orders, it's okay. You leave or no work order. Work order is not known to me actually. Work order. And then cost component mapping, you're doing it now. Fine. So you're putting one of the components. Of work. And then receipt without cost is what is one. <clears throat> and then uh, there will be one for LIFO and FIFO. No, fine. I forgot on the deck. Ah, it's okay. First in first out, it's okay. But actual cost means what? There is one area where we can very well say whether it is going to be LIFO or FIFO actually. Oh God, I forgot about it. Where exactly it is? Work order is okay. And cost compromising. There is one area where we can say uh, whether it is going to be a LIFO costing or a FIFO costing. Let me do one thing. Let me have a, a look at the existing cost profile and then have a look at it. So click on that. I will now go to the what's called default cost profile. <clears throat> so manage default cost profile. Thank you for that. I will go that one. We will now query that cost profile actually. <clears throat> So here is the use financials from the so is actual cost that is not fine that. So uh, this is the cost profile, no? actual cost asset. Fine. You click on it, you will see whether I can see it or not. Actual cost profile asset and go like it. So here, uh, actual this is on no? fine. Quantity depletion method is first in first order. Fine, first in first order is okay. But uh, the 
value at last actual cost find whether it's not there is somewhere it will be there now we don't try to query it now it's not exactly showing me uh, use first receipt layer cost find this is what is receipt to the cost is okay cost component mapping is okay structure type is as it inventory valuation structure is okay find cost like so quantity depletion method maybe uh, first in first out uh, you may be having an option of a last in first out also find somewhere the option will be available but i am not seeing that option at all my lost in first out also will be coming for actual cost of that but exactly yes find here we are unable to see number so we will not take a copy of actual cost as it find we will not query it actually actual cost as it so let me query it actual cost as it so i'll go to the cost profiles so let me query the find cost profile starts with ac actual and then click on search now <clears throat> actual cost as it is one and you can edit actual cost as it and you edit it so here you can see uh because the quantity depletion method the last in first out is not coming the moment you put the actual cost you will have an option of first in first out or last in first out actually i don't understand where exactly it is value the provisional completion this is only for manufacturing actually this is only for manufacturing this is only for the work order transactional costing rules and this one so receipt without cost okay that is again receipt without cost actually use last is a plate cost uh if it is a without cost how you going to receive now use first is a plate cost or use last is a plate cost this may be the one i am not sure about it this is only for transaction costing rules actually this may be the one yeah transaction costing rules fine right? so this gets added up now fine transaction costing rules receipt without last so this may be for the last in first order right? the first in first order last in first order if something is now received without a cost but uh, it is not so in the manufacturing industries many manufacturing industries they are saying that they are using the actual cost for example in one copper smelting uh, whenever they manufacture it they every lot of manufacturing will have a different cost actually so they would like to uh, deplete it on a first in first out basis and that is what they say so many uh, sensitive manufacturing where it is going to vary <clears throat> from uh, time to time so there my students are saying that they are using the actual cost actually <clears throat> uh i don't know exactly how to make it as a last in first out right this is only for transaction cost receipt without cost actually fine there is some i have forgot on that actually fine some merit there fine so last in first out cost when you make an actual cost what happens you will be getting a last in first out option also but this is only for transaction costing without uh, what happens this thing <clears throat> okay so we are going to use this actual cost of you know use our for our demonstration but we try to find out there is some place where we can even make it as a loss in first out also <clears throat> uh when you are defining your default cost profile there also okay fine you know see whether while you are creating the default cost profile whether we have an option of the loss in first out option or then manage default cost profile and that kind of thing when i want to create it <clears throat> and the default cost profiles and then when i am creating it whether it will not give you the option somewhere it will not give the option either on the cost profile or manage default cost profile somewhere it will not give the option so go that you can not give a plus here so as a actual cost <coughs> when you are doing it somewhere it will not give ha So these files are not open for a long time, so it's not taking a long time for us to open up actually. So cost book category, they have no item cost profile creation. So have to asset cost profile. If you give it expense cost profile, so only this much is there actually. Mm, it's okay, I forgot that. So if I remember it, I will not let you know. So we can even go for a. Uh, so this is now by, by basically is the first in first out, late cost. So I will not create an item with the computer accessories as the categories. So no, no, is it at uh, set at item level? Any chance? No, item level we don't have any setup. Item level we don't have any setup. <clears throat> When the cost related stuff. No, no. item oh. level we don't have any setup. So no, I'm just checking like if it is the option is not here whether. No, somewhere I have seen, no, but I forgot on that actually. Long time ago. Okay. Hey, uh, Bala, uh, remember it? Bala, are you there? Fine. Bala is there. Okay, Bala. Uh, you try to find out now fine uh, he is now doing a lot of activity on this topic 
So if you find out, please tell us. Yeah, you get all of us. Okay. We have to find out the last in first order. Okay. I don't know. <clears throat> okay. So I'm not going to create an item with the computer accessories. So once when you create an item with the computer accessories as a category, automatically it becomes actual cost. Let us go there and then create an item. <clears throat> so go there. Go create an item with computer accessories. Hey Nana, you are asking me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bala, uh, can you find out? Because you have what my records, no? Fine. Yes, 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 sir. Yeah, you, you, I think from there only you gave me the answer for the last one. No? <laughs> so you might have gone through to a great depth. Actually, right? I have done it, but I have forgot it. Actually, right? if you find out where to find out the last thing first out cost, please educate all of us. Okay? Uh, sure, sure, no, I can check it out. Yeah. <clears throat> I will not go to the product information management. Bala is uh, uh, doing very deep. He is already implementing procurement, I think. Am I correct, Bala? Uh, no, 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 I'm just following your records and just... Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> because you asked for uh, urgency, no? and I thought that uh, you may be doing it actually. No, 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 I'm not implementing anything else. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. So, organization is about 000. zero, zero. This uh, reconciliation is a big headache. Fine, try to avoid it. If you are given the task, then you don't have any other way to do it. So, click on okay. So, go there, click on it. I will not create an item. <clears throat> So this is a test, is a layer test actually. So go there. If the, uh, I will now say uh, T01 is for layer test. Layer cost test actually. Layer test. Take over it. So go there. I will now first of all give a save. And once when you save it, the categories will be coming. So I am not going to give category of what? Computer accessories. The moment I give the category, the item will now become actual cost profile. The cost profile of actual will be getting associated. So go to the category. <sighs> I will not go to the computer systems. C U M P and then you would ask. So computer accessories. Yeah. So once when you give this category, it says what? Computer accessories means what? It is the actual cost. So click on save. Now let me assign it to the orange. So once when you give a save, we have to find out that last saved message has come. Is no company, is no save. Computer accessories. So I go to the associations and let me associate the child. Actions and then self -nat. And uh, one more guy, Anbu, is also doing a lot of R&D and then uh, he has uh, done, uh, but unfortunately, because of a heavy workload, he is unable to attend also. Uh, Anbu, are you attending it yet? Anbu is not here, no? <clears throat> Anbu is also doing lots and lots of work, actually. But unfortunately, he is not having time to come and attend the session, actually. But even at a, at a later point, whenever you have any doubt, you are getting stuck, you can contact me. So I'm not associating. So save and close. So T01 layer cost is not ready. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do as per this sheet, the layer cost is. So we have on the additional docs records four, we have on the 59th is actual cost demo. So in reality, what happens, it will all be coming from manufacturing. It will all be coming from manufacturing. Items which are, uh, what happens, uh, manufactured at different cost. Fine. For every batch, they have a different cost actually. They'll be coming in and then we'll be selling it now. So <clears throat> layer by layer only, you have to do it. Whereas quantity depletion is as per the picking rule and then cost depletion is as per the first interest rate or loss interest rate. Cost will be depleted as per this, whereas quantity will be depleted as per the picking rule when we are selling it actually. So many companies are using this actual cost because of what your layered costing activity. So this is extensively used in many industries where your production cost is going to vary from batch to batch. In the morning, 10 o'clock, you're manufacturing it, you will incur one cost. And then after 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, if you manufacture it, you'll be incurring another cost for manufacturing. So there, it'll be because I cannot simulate it now. So to, for simulation purposes, I'm going to use a miscellaneous transaction. Actually. And then especially share broking companies are using this one. Right? Share broking, you know, using it. So here you see a share broker has got orders from two customers now, uh, for purchase of voyages shares. Customer A orders for 750 shares and then customer B orders for 300 shares. So he, he made a purchase in the market. He goes there and then make a purchase. At 11 o'clock, whatever, he is now buying 500 shares at 9 or 100. So just this is an example only. So don't take the price as such. Right? At 11 o'clock. At 11.15, he brought 300 shares at 110. At 11.30, he has bought at 130. Right? You know, first of all, simulate these two things, these two things, these three purchases. Right? As a miscellaneous result. Right? In reality, they will all be coming from manufacturing. These uh, transactions will be coming from manufacturing. And so what happens, you go there, you will not simulate it actually. <clears throat> Simulation purpose, we are using miscellaneous transaction. <coughs> go there. 
So, click on that. So, I will now go to what inventory management and then make a miscellaneous transaction on the 001R. So, go there, go to the, it's called your uh, uh, supply chain execution, and then go to the inventory management. And then let us now perform a miscellaneous transaction for this one. Uh, simulating it actually. So go that you want to create miscellaneous transaction for 001 R now. <clears throat> so click on that. And remember, I'm not going to make three different transactions because they are all three different timings actually. So I will not make three lines actually, and three different transactions. This is my miscellaneous. So it is a time sensitive actually. So it's 2.51 a.m. I'm not doing it now. What is this? Thank you, Mr. Archman. I will not populate on the value to one. So one, anything starting on one is basically asset and mission actually. So I'll be using those things. Choose one of them. Okay, come on. I will not take a copy of it. I will put a note back. So I will not say no. My use current item cost is no, so that I can very well give a cost. Thank you for that. So go to no, and then let me add it. Fine, T zero one layer cost. Some uh, what happens? If your uh, companies are using this uh, uh, layered cost to a great extent. So as per my plan, what I am going to do is. I will now make what a uh, receipt fine at 11 o'clock. I'm not going to receive at hundred dollars. 500 shares. I'm going to receive 500 quantities. I'm going to receive it now and click on details. I will now be putting 500 quantities. So I will now put the sub inventory as stores now. No. Remember, quantity depletion is as per the picking rule, cost depletion is as per the first in first out. Fine, that is what I will now put the quantity. So the moment I put the quantity, the enter cost details will become fine quantities. So once you put a quantity, the enter cost details will be enabled actually. So because it is not actually use the current cost is no, no, thank you for that. So we are simulating it. In reality, it will all be coming at the manufacturing cost. Actually. Item price, and then it is 100. So now see, fine. Uh, fine quantities are 100. It is just a simulation test, but it is used extensively in uh, many sensitive industries where the cost of manufacturing varies. And that too, the high uh, value items, like gold, silver, and platinum, whatever the cost of manufacturing may be very different. So we are not doing it at 251 now, fine. 22.3 at 2.51 AM, we are not doing it. This transaction we are doing it. At 100 cost, unit cost is 100. Oh, system is slow. I'll keep on submitting. 2.51 AM, that's what we're doing. So we'll now simulate two more transactions for this now. <clears throat> So you have to get a message that transaction process without any issues actually. So thank you. We'll now create the second transaction. Thank you. Now go to create miscellaneous transaction. I will drop it down. I will give the miscellaneous result. So make it as normal. Bala, you might have practiced so many things, na? In this one. Both Anbu, Anbu was also doing very basically. Right? So many things he told that uh, up to that point, what have I done? And then for the past almost 15 sessions, he is not visible at all. So the next one is what? At the 300 quantities at the 110 at the 11 rupees. So you can now see the timing is what 254. At 251, we made it now. Now we are making it at 254 now. So we go there, click on it. I'll now put the quantity as 300 now. So we are now buying 500 first, and then afterwards 300 next. Yeah, next. Now go there, click on the enter cost details. <clears throat> I will now say click on first of mine. So there are two cost components which flow in for a miscellaneous transaction. And then there are five cost components which flow in for a purchase order transaction. So drop it out. And then here it will be at 110 now. Fine, 110. 
So lay cost. So T01 is for TLE and then what happened? Lay cost is coming. So go there. Sub event is stores. So next time what happens at 11.30, we are going to buy 250 quantities. So the quantity is 250. Enter DA is not. So this will be at 120 actually. Now at 120. Enter cost details. We are simulating it with the miscellaneous one, but in reality, it will all be coming with the, as a manufacturing cost. So go there, click on OK, and then click on Submit. Now we will not transfer transactions to cost unit. So we will not perform a transfer transaction to cost unit. We will not open up one more tab. Region. So it will not perform what you go to the tools and then I go to the scheduled process. It will not perform transfer transactions to cost unit. Transfer transaction to cost unit. Okay. Transfer transactions from inventory to cost unit. Transfer transaction to inventory cost unit. So click on OK. I don't know. Sorry. So the cost org is what US US operation the cost org. Thank you, Mansa. We are working on the visions one. Now we'll now go there and then we'll have a look at what we'll now create the distributions. We'll now create the distributions. I'm going to be going into the interface tables of cost accounting. And from that, what happens once when you create the distribution, so you come into the base team also. Transfer transaction is the cost of the modeling. It's now succeeded. So we'll now go to this place, and then we'll now go to the supply chain education and go to the costing and cost accounting. So we have a lot of activities in the visit morning. The cost accounting also a lot of activities are there, but since everything is set, we are not able to demonstrate the actual account. So that you want I will now go to what? Uh, manage. Uh, what happens? Uh, manage cost, cost accounting, uh, manage, create actually. <clears throat> Get the distributions. Uh, create cost accounting distributions. Create cost accounting distributions that will be having a run control, which what happens? So let me search for it. <clears throat> You're creating cost accounting distributions. And then click on the schedule process. It runs approximately for two minutes. This is a big process. So cost accounting distribution is a big process. Normally, in our company, uh, what happens now? It's uh, what, uh, March, you know, fine. So they will now do this for up to 31st of January. And then they will now perform a draft accounting. And then afterwards, they will now make a check and then uh, they will now take a trial balance also and then check everything is over. Then afterwards, they will now finally account it. So that way they will. So on a month-wise, they will now do month-wise, month-wise. And then there will always be lagging actually because inventory transactions may not be complete at all. <clears throat> because of which, what happens, it will always be lagging. Because the supplier has told that I will be giving you the warranty certificate, guarantee certificates, your carry case, etc., etc., and that is getting delayed, and then uh, that guy will not post at all the transactions. So inventory will be driven negative during this time. Right? There are so many reasons on which what I mean, inventory will be negative. So they will now ensure from the inventory team that for the January have they completed all the transactions or not. So once when the inventory man says that okay, fine, no pending transactions for January, then they will now do the uh, what happens. Uh, uh, create what happens that they will not do the distributions and then do the funding. And then afterwards, they will not close the periods. So we don't have any periods on inventory and procurement. And then we have periods only in uh, what's called your uh, 
uh, your uh, cost accounting has got a period. Financial modules like uh, GL, payables, receivables, cost, project costing, all these things are having a period. You don't have any periods on supply chain actually. That was nicely done. I attended this training in uh, Redwood Shows, California. There, the developers themselves came and then they uh, told about uh, what is the reason for uh, what happens, shifting everything to financial sector. So, period opening is of no real sense or meaning as far as supply chain is concerned. These people must be able to do transactions at the whim. Uh, so, that is why they shifted it. That was it. But uh, the talk was going very high level and <laughs> couldn't interact also with them. <laughs> it was actually, uh, I was a trainer in Oracle and then uh, it was a train the trainer uh, program. And then uh, around uh, uh, 30 participants uh, throughout the globe have been invited from Oracle actually, and then they come in the training. So it is a really very high level actually. I'm understanding the training was really very tough for me. <laughs> because there, even the developers who are sitting in the Redwood shows, they themselves came and then uh, they demoed it to us. Actually. It was a very excellent training. And many of them are Indians. That's the biggest advantage. <laughs> Fine. And then uh, the supplier creation, what happens, was done by one of the Madrasi there. <laughs> you were all having a great, great fun. Right? Lunch, what happens, I used to go with them. And then uh, what happens, enjoy yourself. You were saying that uh, Oracle, uh, the team for uh, order management is really bad because they say that uh, it was uh, predominantly a JD Edwards team. So because of which, what happens, uh, uh, that the thirty percent of order management has become technical actually, and he says that we don't have any control because of the management's decision. What happens? The team's uh, combinations like this, and so what happens? It was like this. Now it's all done now. Fine. So credit accounting is com complete. Now uh, fine. Then transfer transactions now done. Credit, credit cost account receivables now with the warning. I don't know why it's warning. Now fine. So now we'll now go there, click on save and close, and then we'll now have a look at it. You know that we will now review the cost accounting distribution. Fine. That's point. You will now review the cost accounting distribution. Review the cost of funding distributions for this product. <clears throat> so it's a layered cost. So click on the review. So go there. So item is what? I want to say starts with P01 underscore la and then make a search for it. So once I'm going to search for it, it will show everything. So three lines of transactions will be there for receipt sector. So in the meantime, what happens? I will not go there. I will not perform an issue now. I will not perform an issue. So go to the create user transaction. transaction. Will not perform an issue. We'll drop it down. And then make a miscellaneous issue for this. So I'm not going to go back. So this is that count number. So it's no no. Use the current. Uh, I will not say use current item cost is yes. Fine. For issue, I am not going to use the current item cost. So click on plus. So it is a T01. Let's go to law and then we'll tap now. And this time, what I'm going to do is uh, I will not issue out of what. <clears throat> so we have to give 500 shares. Fine. Rather, 750 shares we have to issue. So we got three layers of 500, uh, 300, and then 250. So, okay, fine. so they totally ordered for 1050. So he made three purchases, one at 500, one at 300, and then one at 250 for meeting the customer's needs actually. And then we are going to issue the 750 now. So quantity is 750. And then if you go to the unit deals, you won't be finding those now. You are using the current item cost. No entry details will come. So 750 quantity is going to be issued. So issue for quantity wise is as per the picking rule. And as for the cost is actually first thing first of all. So click on something. It is not done. So we have not completed this. Someone 50 has been issued out. So uh, here, if you go on and see the man item corner is here, I don't have any lot and serial control. So that will also be lot and serial control. Also. In reality, what happens will be lot and serial control. So their quantity depletion is as per the picking rule. Someone 50 has been issued. <clears throat> so 1050, someone 50 is issued, will be having a balance of only 300. We having only a balance of three, balance of 300. So here, uh, I don't have any, what happens, a uh, uh, lot of serial. And so it is now, everything is only in the sub inventory from there. It is not issue. But cost-wise, it will not so. 
final left model. We'll now go on and review cost of funding distributions. You can see the three lines of distributions are now created. It is now fully costed. It is now fully costed. And then if you go down, I know that one. So go on and see the cost distributions. Now, this is a miscellaneous result. And so what happens is the miscellaneous result will be having a standard one like what? Inventory valuation to offset. So inventory valuation, debit means what? The uh, amount has gone up. Inventory valuation to offset. The one. For different, different things, uh, different, different combinations of accounts will be there. And then uh, you don't worry about the seeded ones. And then you have to ask the financials about the actual ones which they're using. Right? So all of them will be having inventory valuation to offset. And I issued out, it will be reverse actually, right? but you will now see how the value is now coming up. Right? Reserve Resi players now. Is now saying reserve players. The reserve players is the one, and then it now showing layer by layer actually. <clears throat> so the first one, the long, the bottom one will be 500, and the next one is what? Uh, it is a 300, and the next is 300. So this is the one. Layer by layer costing is there. Reserve players are now shown here. So now what happens? I issued it. We'll now go there. I will now transfer transaction to transfer transaction. My inventory costing is there. So let me resubmit this contract. Transfer transaction only. My law resubmit. Yeah, resubmit again for the same parameters. I don't have any parameter thing like that. For the US operations only I'm doing it. So once it is done, we will now again create the counter. This time you can see how this is going to be depleted from cost point of view. So whenever you're having a sensitive manufacturing, then they will not go for actual cost. They will not go for a perpetual average. They will not go for actual cost. So there's no one. So it is now completed. Fine, transfer transfer costing is completed. Let us go there and then we'll know what happens to run it now. And we'll now again run it. We'll now run it again. <coughs> we'll now go there. So go to the manage cost accounting distributions. So we'll now go to the so no, create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Create. <clears throat> I will now go there. So click on it. I will now create the cost accounting distribution. Create cost accounting distribution. I'm going to make it. Go there. So starts with T01 and then I make a search. The cutoff date we will be they will be using it in a very nice manner. Fine. In our case, what happens? They will now have a cutoff date up to 31st of January, and then they will now uh, create the distribution, and then they will now create the trial balance, and then see whether every distribution is not proper or not. So only when it is there, then afterwards, what happens? The accounting will be in a draft mode, and then after seeing all the accounts and then showing it to the customers, then they will now make the final accounting. Entry. That way they will. So they will now perform the schedule process. So now it has been pushed into the costing area. Right? The, Issue has been pushed into costing area. So, on so two to pay concurrent is now running. So we'll wait for the concurrent. So that is going to complete this exercise actually. Okay, it now takes some two minutes. So let us now go to the next topic now. Find that. So that uh, once when I give the distribution, that is the end of it. Now, find afterwards, the remaining or lab exercise. So only for uh, what happens? Uh, the seven fifty only I am going to show it to you. The seven fifty I will not show it to you. The remaining is a lab exercise. How that seven fifty will be taken? Fine. So it will not take up the five hundred first, and then from the three hundred it will not take up the two fifty. So it will not take layer by layer, and then the customer has to pay this much of money. And there is, a, there is a cost to him actually. So I will not show it. To you. So it takes some time. So in the meantime, what happens? We will not go for the next topic now. Fine. <clears throat> this is a very famous topic actually. If you go to the uh, fifth one. And, uh, I'm going to go to the asset expense items and supplementaries. And here I have a problem. Fine. Somebody please try to find out now. Fine. So we will have very many external locations in which what happens is that the company will be replenishing the stock. So in, in US, the biggest one is what hospitals. So uh, they will be what happens to your uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing companies. So they will be replenishing the hospital supplies with the hand gloves, needles, etc. etc. So many things that they will be doing. So they use three techniques for replenishment. What is what? RC, replenishment counting. One is what? Periodic automatic replenishment. And then one is Kanban replenishment. So depending upon the convenience, they will now use one of them. For which the rest and postman services are the required. Knowledge of, uh, you must need the knowledge of the rest and postman services. Since I don't know, I'm unable to do that. I'm unable to learn it actually. So if anybody learns about uh, the three replenishment techniques, you please do it. Now, that replenishment technique is now going to trigger a purchase order actually. That will be triggering a purchase order. And then that purchase order will be received at the hospitals. And then that is known as the expense destination. And then the location is. So I will not show you only the receipt of it. Fine. The PO and then it's receipt. Fine. That is only I'm going to show you. I'm unable to use the real technique of replenishment actually. Because I don't know how to use the register. I, in fact, what I was had one, uh, one technical guy in my training. Some one, two years back, I think. 
he knows the rest and postman services but he is unable to understand this said <laughs> rc par and kanban so he is unable to integrate these two things right a person must know rc kanban uh, uh, par and kanban as well as rest and postman services i don't find anybody at all <laughs> he is saying that i can write the code separately but how to integrate it along with this i don't know that's what he told me <clears throat> so his recording is also there you just see i have given a recording also uh, it may be somewhere in this place not in one of them i am not exactly remembering a recording one may find that you just see his recording right somewhere anybody finds out where his recording is there i need the record actually uh, this is the intro to erp is okay uh, that's okay that will be there is a, his recording is there i am not remembering the file section so much of a content is there i don't know what, which is where or what see is the 22nd one on uh, additional logs 3 it is his record now fine you can just watch about it it's a very difficult one i am unable to understand how many he was demonstrating it actually so he told me about how to do the rest and postman services he says that many a times uh, is a trial and error there is no such a ready made uh, what happens a solution available now uh, this is a par counting details fine for that one so i took this now 23rd what happens i took this code actually this code has to be put on your uh, what's called on your rest and postman services fine right. so but uh, this is the only code i got it from uh, uh, metalink actually fine right. so you had to put the appropriate number and then organization code and then the quantity and then the sub unit these four information you had to appropriate public and then populate this on the rest and postman services and then run it for replacement again right. so there is one uh, one more link is also given on my right. uh, so go through the link and then try to find out right. and if you can succeed on this it will be great actually so watch this 20 second record now watch this 20 second record on additional docs record 3 <clears throat> that will be giving you a good idea about it now that's what goes on for this and then i may be having one document regarding inventory for replenishment technique you can see this one is a white paper actually i am unable to understand this white paper the white paper is good is beautifully written but since i don't know the rest and postman service is a 44 page document now right? nicely written actually but since i don't know rest and postman services i am unable to what about the work on it actually so use this now if you happen to do rc par or kanban this document will be very handy actually. but it you need rest and postman services to what about do it <clears throat> so it's a good document just not note down often so this is a document on the one now. so the 17th document is a white paper on what about the par replenishment white paper actually on additional records not sorry and then the 22nd is is one Uh, if you have any technical guys it will be great i have now even given you the technical records also so uh, I, i from the what happens from the uh, metalink i found that uh, this has to be inserted in the rest and postman services so you have to create it and then insert it and then afterwards run it now so this technique i am really handicapped actually i am not able to show you that so that is the problem so i will not show you only what happens uh, the way in which it is being done from a miscellaneous or a, from a simple purchase order point of view so click on refresh now okay. so here the transfer transfer and the costing and the concrete cost accounting distribution is completed now we will now go there click on it we will now have a look at it again and click on save and close and come out again and then query for this one. so click on search now we will have one more transaction will be coming and everything is a layer by layer click on search now so we made a issue for 750 we will now find one more thing will be coming out here you click on it and then it will be depleting it layer by layer actually <clears throat> so you're searching for it so we have to have what one more entry for the miscellaneous issue actually. so there is a miscellaneous receipt and then we'll have one for miscellaneous issue actually. so go there so we have a miscellaneous issue actually. so here each and everything here if you see it is now showing you a single layer right? there is a single layer for 500 quantities there is a single layer for 300 quantities and then there is a single layer for 250 but since we issued 750 you will have multiple layers right? in this one if you mean clear the miscellaneous issue you will have multiple layers actually so it will be as per this one it will be as per this one. so here uh, the 500 quantities which has been purchased 100 will be issued to him and then afterwards the 250 which has been purchased at 110 will be issued to you we have purchased 300 but only 250 will be given to you so two layers of costing he has to pay 77500 in the new order so see now 
Let's like one. So here, uh, sorry, I do like one. You can now see find that quantity and then do the quantity. So it's a layered cost. Like one. So if you keep a cost of the five hundred, what happens? Uh, uh, offset is divided and the inventory valuation is created with fifty thousand rupees. And then if you click on this now, fine, you will now say it is now at a, what happens? The two T at rate of one ten now. If you go to the cost information, you can now see the information is what one ten. Oh, it's not showing anything at all. So cost distribution is what one ten. Okay, so it is there, no? Cost information is there. Cost information is there, huh? Yeah, one ten unit cost. Yeah, one ten. Okay, unit cost is there. Visit cost is one ten actually. You know that. So if you go to the cost distribution, so for this one, he has to pay two twenty seven thousand five hundred. No, fine. So twenty seven thousand five hundred is the one. So twenty seven thousand five hundred here he has to pay fifty. So totally seventy seven thousand five hundred he has to pay. So this is basically called layered costing. Okay. So inventory is credit means what inventory get decremented. But actual physical quantity is as per the what's called your uh, uh, your picking rule now. Fine. The picking loss in first round, first round based upon lot and zero number. So layered costing is not shown here. But where will be the total cost of this item now? Fine. Of this shoe. Fine. Is there anywhere? It is not showing you. It is only showing you the layers actually. The depletion layers it is not showing you. But in total, it doesn't show you at all anywhere. So this way it will work. So this way it's working. So this is fifty thousand, and the next is what twenty-one thousand five hundred. And then the next is the lab exercise for you. So afterwards, you issue what happens? Another uh, what happens? The seven fifty is there. Another three hundred you're going to issue. So it will not take fifty from one ten, and then the remaining two fifty from one twenty. That way it will not cost. There is the lab exercise. So this is what is called actual cost. In reality, they will all be coming from manufacturing. And then you will know you will be selling it actually. So you will now receive it from manufacturing, and then sales order pick will be basically depleting it actually. Right. So there are two types of depletion. One is a quantity depletion as per the picking rule, and then cost depletion as per the first in first out. And then somebody tell me we can even make it as a loss in first out also. Right. I have seen it, but I have forgotten it. Where exactly is that? Anna, I just checked on metalling. So it says it's not yet uh, there in fusion. Last in first out. Last in first out is there actually. I know that it is. It has come actually. It has come. Uh, yeah. Lost in first order has come actually. But I am not remembering. Find somewhere I have seen it actually. Yeah, it was there previously. It was saying that lost in first order had to come now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I yeah. seen that note also. But afterwards, one of my students told me that it, is, it can also be simulated actually. That's what he is saying. But oh. all right. So see, <laughs> if it is not there, then we don't have it now. Okay. Yeah, currently that note says that it's yet to yet in development. Enhancement is going on. That's what it says. This completes the all the costing now. Right? Standard costing, average costing, and then lipo fipo costing. And then uh, I have not shown you so many things here and there. So you only have to sit and then what happens? Uh, make a notes or whatever it is now. Right? Whenever time permits and mood permits, I will also create my structure and completely demonstrate costing. Yeah, I must get the mood actually. Like the more on my structure, if you do it, then it will be so easy and then so nice. Otherwise, <laughs> it's impossible. So we'll now come to the next topic of what replenishing an external location. This is called an expense destination. You're going to replenish it. Right? So first of all, let me create a location. You will not create a location. So this activity is not going to be So I will now go there and then create a location. So go to the setup and make runs, and then I'm going to create a location. Okay, and search. So manage locations. Manage location button. So go there, manage location. Let me get the location. So go there. I will not say is the T zero one underscore aims. So I am now creating a location over there. So T zero one aims are one zero zero two zero. This location will not have any association to an inventory or anything. I will now say T zero one aims. That address. This location will not have any association to any inventory or anything. So you'll be having multiple such things. These locations are known as expense destinations actually. These are known as expense destinations. So it's a T zero one. Click on search. So we'll have the aims location, aims hospital locations. 
we will not associate to any inventory order. Right? Such locations will not be associated to inventory order. Now, we will not go and then directly create a purchase requisition for this. We will not go there and then create a purchase requisition. Okay. All right. So, whenever you are creating any purchase requisition for express destination, you have to first of all set up the preferences. So that you go to the purchase requisition. You will be setting up the preferences before. Let's move it. I will not go to the what? You will not go to the update requisition preferences. First, you set up. So here, make it as what internal derivative locations what T01 aims actually. Aims also T01. So go there. And then it is the expense location, and then it will not have any association to the supplementary at all. So in such cases, you may even put your charge account also. You may even put your charge account again. Otherwise, the employee's expense account will now become the charge account also. So it's not coming. Well, and deliver to location type, is it internal? It is not internal, actually, it is external. Is it, is it coming as only internal or one time only? Fine, it's okay. Okay. I'll not say it's a one time. Fine. It has to be a one time. One time means I have to put everything. Fine. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, fine. I will not make it to be internal. It's okay. Uh, it is not actually correct, actually. Fine. Otherwise, whatever, you have to make it. Okay. And then let me add my expense. Uh, whatever. If they, I have not given any charge account for this employee. And so, whatever, I am not putting it. Uh, I will not say. Uh, uh, expense destination. Expense destination account. <clears throat> destination account. So I will now put some account on it. So any account starting on phi is all uh, normally an expense basically. So for my understanding, what happens? I'm not putting some account. Seven so this account will be the charge account for that particular requisition actually. Oh, it's not accepting it also. It's a checking account, so it's not accepting it. On the short term. So click on search now. Hey, come on. Cancel it. The screen itself is locked. Come on here. Something has happened to the screen actually. It got stuck, maybe. Mm, it got struck actually. I thought that they will not accept it, but there is some other problem. It got struck actually. <clears throat> so I will now go there. I will now uh, come to this place. It is already complete at a point. I will now go to the requisition creation. So I will now go to the what's called procurement. I will now go to the purchase requisitions. I will now check this now. Update requisition preferences. So expense, and then I will not say T01. And I will not put the account, it does not see in the inside, it will not populate it manually actually. So I will not put the account over here. Click on save and close. I'm opening the account. So let us now go and then create a requisition. And requisition tax. And remember, this location do not have any association to any org at all. So I will not put an item on there. Do you have any item here? And I will not put the ready-made item. Triple zero. So let me put the missions item over here. Click on it. And then see, it's all coming up. So the charge account is coming automatically. And maybe somewhere else is coming. I don't know where and where is coming. Mission has got a lot of setups now. So it is at the Ames location, Ames Hospital location. So click on it. I don't know. Go for it and go on it. And then click on add to cart. So this will not have any association with the org at all. And click on it. I will not go on and check for this. For the review. review. So here I will now click on the manage approvals and then see whether the application developer is going to approve or not. Or somebody would have been working on this now already we set it up also. So this screen is already locked. I'm going to close it actually. Space. I'll be duplicated actually. Next it. Okay, application developer is there. Fine, click on submit. So 204162 is the one. 204162. Now, I'm not going to auto convert it. I will not go to this place. And then we may even have what happens a BP agreement also. In that case, what happens, it will be getting automated actually. And we can even automate it also. So go there. So we'll not go there. Click on it. 
I will now go to what procurement and then I will now go to the purchase orders. And then let us now query this uh, 204162. Is that 204162? I will now go to the process requisition. Go to the process requisition. And then we are now asking the supplier to what happens? Uh, remove it and make it for the application search. 204162. So click on search now. So once when you search for it, it's not coming. Select and then click on add to document. So this supplier has to deliver it to Ames Hospital location. And we don't have any agreement on it. Otherwise, you can even provide it and click on it. <coughs> And then we'll now convert this into a purchase order. Go down. Click on create. We are going to convert into a purchase order. And remember, this purchase order will not have any org association at all because this location is not tied to any org. It is an expense destination. Nana, so when we say expense uh, destination or the location is external, right? External, yeah. So that, that is tied to the company or the customer? That no, location. it is not tied to anything at all. It is not tight so, so, in which cases do we use it? Like, at what the scenario? Where do we use actually? That's right, Jana. I'm having an Ames hospital, and then I am a pharmaceutical manufacturing company, and then they, we are asking the supplier to directly go and then One deliver, deliver it at this place. Okay, okay. Instead of coming to our inventory, yeah, it will not come to ours at all. Right? It will not come to our inventory. So, okay. the supplier will be supplying to the hospital location straight away. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, it will be good. And uh, when I was uh, doing a support in Saudi, they wanted to have what happens, a similar thing for the customer also. Fine. Uh, but okay. it's there. Customer replenishment is also there, but I couldn't understand the document at all. Fine. They, I tried for some time, they sort of no, sir, not possible. So the customer's location, they wanted to what happens, replenish it like uh, this now, fine. Like using their uh, RC power and all, fine. Whenever the stock level goes down, what happens, it will be replenished through a sales order, actually. Now we are doing it by a purchase order. So through sales order also, you can do it. There are documents, but I, the document is not understandable. I, this is a very difficult one. And then I tried, then I tried for about a week's time. Then I told no, I couldn't do it. No. <laughs> it was really very difficult for me to understand. So I'll not populate my ABC consulting. I'll not put ABC consulting. And then only for our location, we can have a, a what happens, a standard inspection result. Inspection, standard inspection result is applicable only for us. And then if it's an external one, it has to be only direct. Fine. Otherwise, we cannot receive it at all. So I will now generate a problem and then show it. Fine. Now coming over there. Fine. So I will now go to the schedules. And then I will no, it should it. be direct only. It should be only direct because it is an external location. And then uh, it is also showing you when you want it. Fine. The requisition is automatically pointed at everything. So let me go there and then let me what happens, uh, make a mistake here and then show it you. That we cannot receive it at all. Yeah. So if uh, it is a standard receipt, I cannot receive it at all. Fine. Standard receipt is not possible. Okay, again. So US 164416. So US, US 164416 is the one. US 164416. So click on it. I will now submit the document. Yeah, Peter, Now it is now submitted for approval now. So let us now, we'll now have a small break. So go there, click on it. You now put the purchase order number of my US 164. It is open now. Now let us now try to receive it. Huh? Okay. So now here, what happens? Uh, we cannot make an inventory receipts at all. Inventory receipts are not possible. If you go to the supply chain solution, and then here, what happens? You should not make an inventory receipts at all. But it has to be what happens uh, once when you give what your procurement, uh, what happens, if you give your advanced procurement requester role, so you will be having what happens uh, one receipts also will be coming on this paper. If you go to the procurement, if you give the advanced procurement requester, you will have my receipts also integrated on the advanced procurement requester. So this is the area where you have to go. That is not on the inventory area. Now go there and then query for this. Okay. 
my results i am going to tell you okay so the purchase you have to go for the requisition number not the purchase order number actually I have written it fine 204162 you find 204162 because there is a demand actually so we are not querying for this whether we are having any receipts available as there or not so we are making a search now it is not coming at all so that i will not say any time then <clears throat> make a search now don't come because your po is of a standard receipt okay so the routing must be of a direct and that is why it is not coming and go to this place let us know go on the ed now find the actions and then read it down you going to edit the document go away <laughs> always give a meaningful name on the description so that what happens every change order you will understand about why you created the change order Fine. I will not say change of RR to direct. So reserve property is not changed to direct. I will not go to the schedules. I will not do anything. And then, if you see in this place, there will not be any org association at all. Direct, direct. Click on okay. So you won't have any org association because we don't put an org explicitly, but we only put the derivative location. Since the location is not tied to any org. So you won't find on the lines region as well as this place. What happens? The R will be absent. Actually. So that you want. The R will be absent. No, it's not. So R will be absent. So he is the requester actually. Requesters, uh, what happens? The charge account will be coming as a, what your charge account actually. The charge account. The requesters expense account will be coming as a charge account. So that is the way it will work. So uh, he has just been done. No, fine. No, not. I will not submit it. We are not changing it to order direct now. So click on submit. Now, the change order is now getting submitted. Now we can very well receive it. Actually. For inventory receipts, we are doing a lot of activities. Right? Whereas for a self service receipts, you can only do three things now. Right? One is receipt, one is return, and then one is corrections. So these are the only three activities which you can do on a uh, self service receipts. Right. Go to the manage orders and query the order. So you must say that the IA account is still pending. Of I must not now wait for the IA account. So once the receipt routing is now direct, so we can very well make a self service receipts. So self service receipts is for self service procurement as well as your expense destinations. And there are various ways. And then we know query on the requisition. I click on search now. Fine. Now it will not show you. It will not show you. Click on select it and then click on visit. You must select one or more lines. Okay, selected it. So click on receipt. You're going to make a receipt. So do that. So quantity is what it is. Uh, I will now uh, receive nine only. So I will now put the pay bill number, and I will now put the vacancy slip number. So now the self service receipt is now made. It is a direct delivery. It will be delivered onto that. Or I was a employees one now. Fine. Had it been employee, fine. So we have got a receipt number. Fine. Go there. Come on, take a copy. The receipt number is there. So if it is a, going to be an employee, then what happens? Employees residence location or his own office location. So there will be so many. That is, we will have a junior manager sales is now sitting in Nagpur in his office in his house, and then he is now doing the marketing activity. So it will be delivered into his expense or his expense locations address actually. In that. So that is what is, and then the receipt number is now created. Fine, that not. So uh, if you go there and then click on search, now fine, that not search. It will not show you what happens. The nine is receipt. So you can click on it and then now monitor it. Manage receipts. You click on the manage receipts. Now you can now query on the GR number. So once when the consignment number is closed, you have to query on the GR number. Fine, click on search. Now. So, so it's not showing you fine. So we can even perform a return or a correct. Fine. These are the only two activities we can. Nothing else again. No, no, no. So this completes your what happens the expense destination, what happens, uh, but the real activity is replenishment. <laughs> we created a manual requisition from a replenishment. It has to create a requisition. So that complete route is not known to me. If anybody knows it, please educate us. We'll all learn from you <laughs> because you need to know the rest and postman services. I got some code here and there, and then it has to be integrated into the document actually, and then we have to do it. So okay, so that portion is now pending still. But I have shown you about how we are going to what I was do a purchase for an expense destination. Now the next is what PO import. The next topic is PO import. We will not go there. So we will not go there. We will not perform. 
So first is what happens? You go to docs dot oracle dot com. So we are going to perform a PO import. Now, first of all, you will not see the version of this one. Go there. And then about this application, the Martha one time that point, you will not see the application about. So it is basically 21D. So on 21D, every version will be having a different, different uh, template. So you have to download that. We will not go on and download it. <coughs> so we will not download that. <coughs> so we will not go to this place. So you go to the Fusion Cloud applications on this one. Left hand side, Fusion Cloud applications. And then here, I will now go to the procurement. So I'm now go to the procurement area. Go to the procurement. Enter the ERP and then procurement. And Fusion Cloud applications and I'm going to the procurement. In the procurement, choose the appropriate one. Now it's going to choose 21D now. Fine, choose the appropriate version. And then here you click on the all books on the left hand side. After having chosen your version of the uh, instance, you go there and then click on the all books on the left hand side. You're going to go to all books. And then here we will now go down and find out that. So we have to find out the FBDA. Normally FBDA is kind of put under the implementation, but they change it time and again. So go there. The file based design goes there and click on the HTML of it. Click on HTML. So here on the purchasing, we can import the blanket purchase agreement. The contract purchase agreement as well as the standard purchase. I know what to do all this. These are lab exercise. So let me do the purchase order import. Right? These things that can be uh, similarly for the self service procurement. And then uh, there are supplier models. Fine. There are plenty of things that you can uh, do this. One. So let me go to the purchase order import. I'm so click on the purchase order import. It has got four sheets actually: the headers, lines, schedules, and the distributions. So let us now go there. Click on it. I will now download this template and click on it. Let me download the template. So go ahead, come on. I will not get a show all. Open it up and then let me put a directory called import. Go to the computers. Go there. So I will not create a directory called SCM import is there. So I will not put on the SCM import itself this one. So PO import is not up. Why is coming as one? Okay, it may have been downloaded there actually. So here we don't have, but uh, there, fine, rename it. I will not remove it. So since I am working on uh, visions one, you must be very clear upon the visions uh, area now. So let me open it up. So visions uh, data must be known to you very clearly. Visions data. And click on enable it. So there are four sheets which you have to click on. So this is the first one instructions. Always whenever you are working on a new one, what happens is read everything and then do it. And that will be helping you a lot. So much of information is there in the overview. So that itself will tell you how to uh, do the FBDA import. I go to the headers now. And headers import. And go to the home so here, <clears throat> so we'll now go and then we'll now open up our credentials actually. I will now go to the fourth one, and then on the additional docs four, on the third one is visions. Uh, what happens? Uh, entities actually, vision entities actually. So we are going to use these vision entities actually. So uh, interface key, just keep it as a point. I'm not going to do only one line actually. The batch number is coming. I'm going to leave it as a document type is standard so we have what the standard is the only document type. procurement bu fine. procurement bu is what us1 business unit us1 b and then you are capital us1 bu business unit requisitioning bu is all same you don't have anything it's a what happens it's a decentralized purchase final sold to legal entity so sold to legal entity, what happens? You go there. <coughs> US one legal entity. So is a US one legal entity. Make a mistake if you US one legal entity. Right. It's all okay. If I make a mistake, please tell me not. So I will not take the procurement view copy. I will not paste it over here. So buyer. Uh, I will not say. Uh, the buyer is a must actually, and Clara, Clara Fury. But again, I'm not not sure about how to give the what's called the name in the system actually. Clara Fury, last name come off first name or uh, oh god, uh, Clara Fury. We'll not see whether it is there. Or not. Uh, I'll be getting confused. On that. Let us need see whether we have the buyer like this now. Ah. Back to see the buyer actually. Uh, I'll go to the manage procurement agents and see. So, go to space. Uh, go to the setup and maintenance. 
and then for the managed procurement agents of Philippines. So click on search. <clears throat> so I'm going to say manage procurement agent because I'm not remembering about whether I have to do it with the last name, comma, first name, or how to do it. So it says what here in this place, it says what clar C L E R E F U R E C L E R E C L E R E. You must search. Now that data may not be correct actually. Search for it. Not going to be F U R E way. F U R E way. F U R E. It's also not coming. So that means what? Uh, these data are all not correct actually. Okay, I will now give as per this one. Okay? The buyer name, the name of the buyer, and the buyer called PRC 10. Uh, I will not take it up from the system itself. I will not take it up from system. The employee name. I will take it from the system. So you will go to the tools and then I go to the security console now. I will now take up the name of the employee for the listing issue, the username. So go to the users now. So it's a PRC 10 we are working upon. So the one, I click on it. Fine. Uh, first name is PRC 10 space, other last name or what? PRC 10 space student. I will give you first name and last name. So this way I will not write. If it doesn't work, you know, see, no. <laughs> because you can check, check it on the PO right now. Nah, how it is? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we can even check it on the PO also. Very good, very, very good idea. Good idea. The format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can check on the PO format. So it's very correct. So click on the We will not check it on the PO format actually. Click on it. Go to the procurement and then I go to the purchase orders now. I go to the purchase orders. So let me put it back. Take copy of it and then put it back. Go to the manager orders. Go to the manager orders. Order number, I'm not putting it. So once when I click on the hyperlink, it will not go for a change order actually. I click on the hyperlink. It will not go for the change order. Buyer name, the way in which it's coming will be So buyer is what? PRC 10 space student. Okay, will not do it. So PRC 10 space student. So you will not put the same thing over here. So PRC 10, so how it is not fine. The PRC is a capital actually. All the things are capital. Yes is capital. So PRC 10 space yes, P U D I am not putting nothing. Currency there. Not. And then a description is what I will not say. Nana's purchase orders. A built location. Fine over So built location here. What happens? I will not use Seattle actually. And then the ship location also here. And the supplier. Uh, I will not put this supplier. Ah, Seattle, it's spelling. In it. Oh, here. So I will not put the ABC consulting. ABC space consulting is a supplier now. ABC. Make a mistake, please point out to me. Supplier site. Supplier site is what? ABC space US one. Supply side is ABC space PO. So ABC space US one. Payment term is okay, fine. Uh, initiating parting buyer, okay, fine. So that the position of the card of form is no. Note to enter, note to receive. So they are now given some generic notes over there. And okay. Attribute, is, I will not remove the attribute. So they are all basically DFO patch. There are the DFO attributes. And then these are all the DFR, remove it, attribute date, remove it. <clears throat> that you can experiment by doing all those things. Attribute number, something, attribute type stamp, remove it. Nothing else. So I will now save it. Save it. Okay. Second line, let me delete it. Only one line I'm going to do. So here you will have a reference of what interface header key is, you see. So on the header, what happens? We have anything. I will not go to the lines area. Fine. Click on the PO lines. So click on the, go to the PO interface lines. <clears throat> so go to the PO. So I will know uh, what happens. It says what every uh, sheet will be having an interface key, and then it will be referencing the previous one. Fine. That was ABC here. In this place, you can see is ABC. So that is referenced on the line interface. 
and then this is abc one actually that is that and those are goods and an item so no food item of another t01 underscore layer a o e r layer underscore test this item huh? am i correct oh what i this item okay my layer test i am putting it here yes and amount i will not remove it now and the quantity let us say 100 quantities amount is basically uh, uh, quantity into price now right? quantity into price amount right? remove the amount amount is required only for an expense item actually only for a description based amount items we need amount otherwise what all these amount is blank so here uh, i will not see whether the pu is what ea capital small e actually so units of is capital small e capital small e so the price i will not say uh, 2 dollars no matter so this will be calculated the amount actually so if uh, what happens the quantity is not there then we have to give the amount if the quantity is there you should not give the amount 102 another quantity 102 dollars amount and the supplier item is also property so okay no to enter no to receive and the line attribute is not required line level they are all line level dfx actually no 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 okay then space wait So let me remove remove the remaining two. Select them. Alt E. So the first line is now added. So correct. So headers is now completed. Lines is now completed. We will now go to the line location interface. So we are now using the T zero one layer test. So under 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 the under each. Oh, this each also has to be corrected. So this also correct. This also correct. So it's a capital small e. So item is done. So we'll now go to the locations line locations interface. Okay. So next is line location interface. We'll go to the home icon. So here is now referencing the previous sheet. The previous sheet is now starting on what uh, the ABC is the interface key. So ABC one is the interface line key. The header key now. So if you go to the space find the line the third one find line more so it is now showing the interface key line key and then it is the line location so it is now done so it is now referencing schedule is one and the shift location is what Seattle Seattle uh, uh, okay location is given means org is not required so it is hundred quantities at the price of two point need by date I will now go there we have to give one of the dates actually fine we now go to the query mode fine again the Time uh, variations fine. It's very very important actually. So I do. And then here I will not say uh, third, and then I will not say on twenty fifth we need. Here again the date is a very important one actually. The date is the one. So the format of the date is very important as per the uh, current ones we are giving. If it gives error, then we have to correct it. So twenty five three twenty twenty two I have given off and need the date. And then destination date is in the okay. Yeah, uh, no problem. Okay. 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 So the remaining three lines I'm going to delete. So the third sheet is not done. So the third sheet is not done. We'll now go to the fourth sheet. So headers, lines, line locations, and then finally distributions. Click on the final one. Go to the distribution. Go to the home now. So here, whatever it is now referencing the previous one. And this one is coming. So the distribution number is one there. Again, hundred quantities. Now the charge account, the system will automatically pick up from the mapping set actually. Whereas when you perform a miscellaneous reset, we have to give the account remember the charge account has to be given for a miscellaneous reset. Right? When you are importing the stock, stock import needs an account. Whereas here the charge accounts are not required. It will be taking up from mapping set action. We want to take from mapping set.
So try to populate even the maximum fields and then I try to work on it. Time stamps are basically based upon the preferences on your system actually. So all of them have been completed. Now, having completed all the four sheets, I will now go to the place. Instructions for CSV report. Let me generate the CSV file. So click on generate CSV file. And then here I'm now going to show my this thing. I will now go to this place. And then here I will now go to the SEM training. And then here I will now go to what SEM import. The SEM import. Open. So it's a PO import order something. So click on save now. On the SEM import itself, I'm importing it. I click on save. On the SEM import, I click on okay. Uh, it is now again asking for a save now. Fine, click on it. This is the headers now. Fine, this is the headers. Fine, there is the SEM PO import. This is the headers one now. Fine, click on save now. The next one is what? It is now asking for the lines now. Fine, click on save. Fine, next one, it is asking for line location now. Fine, the third sheet. Fine, every sheet is now going as a separate Excel sheet. Fine, click on save now. And then the final sheet is what? Distribution. So PO headers, then line. And then uh, lines, then line locations, and then distributions. All the four will be clubbed into one zip file, actually. So click on save. All the four will be clubbed into one zip file. All the four Excel sheets will be clubbed into one sheet. So go there. It is not done. Now click on OK. And then do not save it because the system will be creating additional sheets also. So in this one, what happens? You don't save it. Then close it and then don't save it. Don't save it. <clears throat> it is not done. So we'll now go there. Click on it. So we have this now. <clears throat> Now, I'm not going to bring it to what happens to your uh, uh, interface area directly. I'm not going to that. So let me go on and bring it to the interface area. So I will now go to monitor process and go to the schedule new process. So initially, it has to be brought to the UCM area and the interface area, but we can even do it together actually. So click on schedule. Oh, well, this, if the sheet is idle for a longer time, it doesn't work at all. So click on schedule process. So I will now say load interface file. Load interface file. Load inter and go down. Load interface file for import is now going to bring the uh, zip file, <clears throat> the FBD zip file into your interface area straight away in one go via UCM. So, via UCM, you can very well bring it in one go. So, load interface file for import of the one and click on OK. So, via UCM area, we can bring it to this page. So, go down. We are now going to put the import process actually. So, the import, uh, the UCM area is import orders. So, the UCM area is import orders. So let us now go and then put the UCM area over here. Sometimes it doesn't come properly. So you have to make a search and then do it now. <clears throat> so import process is UCM area, it's import orders now. Fine. <clears throat> and then if it doesn't come immediately, then you can even go via search and then populate the import area. Remember, I have not brought the file to the UCM area at all. So in one go, I will now bring it to the UCM area and then hop it to the interface tables actually. <clears throat> so I'll be doing both things in one go. So, go down. so if it is not visible, then what you can do is you can go to the search now and search for it. And then it is the import orders. Import orders. Click on search. There is a UCM area. Oh, it is a basically case sensitive actually. Fine. I don't know why they have made it case sensitive. Fine. Capital A and then capital O. Import orders. It is case sensitive. Actually. Search. Search should not be case sensitive. Make our load. So there's no time. Click on okay. It is applications purchasing it. For sales order is a different one. Right? Importing a sales order is a different way. And that you'll be seeing it during the company. In sales order, I have a problem. Right? I'm still unable to, my students are simply crying on that company. I'm unable to solve the problem. I asked the technical guys, they're also not helping me out. And that problem is still persisting on the sales order. Actually. Sales order import. So what are the import orders? I will now drop down the data file <clears throat> and then click on the upload a new file. And click on the upload new file. Onto the area, I'm going to upload it directly. And click on the browse now. And then I'm not go there. You go to the computers. And then I go to the main. And then I'm not going to the SCM import. In fact, I'm not going to the space. And then do the SCM import. And then choose your PO import. PO import orders a zip file. So I'm choosing the import file number. <coughs> number so now I'm going 
kind of thing. <clears throat> so when I submit it, it will now first come into the UCM area of import orders and then it will now land up on the interface table. So both of the things are done together. So come submit. So this concurrent is running now. So all the four files will be basically run. Load interface file for import, and headers, lines, line locations, and distributions. And all the four files are running now. Oh God, so many are running. Right, so. Normally only four actually. Okay, I'm not aware of it. Man. Why so many files are only four files has to run now. And load interface file for import. Oh, only four are running. Load interface file for import. So there are four are there. Only four are running. So these four are succeeded. Is also succeeded. Now we can now bring it to the base tables via this. Fine, do that. Now bring it to the base tables. It's called import and then space order, which you can do it. But people don't use this uh, ESS job for this. They don't use this ESS job. So for import orders, we have a special utility. Thank you one more. We can do it from inside itself. So they bring it to the interface tables via this. Or, but whatever, they go there, go to the purchase orders. And then click on it. Go to space. And then here, we are going to do the import orders from the orders. From the orders, we have an import order. Through this area, through this navigation, they normally use import. I don't know why it's so, <laughs> but they used to do it sometimes. So click on submit a new process by which what happens it will be. Whatever has been brought into the interface tables of purchasing, they will be brought into the base tables of this. Submit a new process. So the procurement view, fine. The default buyer. So it is now picking up all these things. From my approval action is what automatic. Normally is what uh, uh, do not approve. Fine. Submit for approval also. So the minimal parameters you can use it, and then whatever you can go there. Click on submit. So click on submit. The process is submitted. Three one five. The process. <coughs> So the status is wait, and then the log also will be coming over here. We'll now find the log also. I don't know. All my students used to do only from here. Not they don't do the run the years as Java. I don't know why it's so. I've seen the projects in Kuwait. Uh, my people were doing it. I was in charge, and then I only taught them the basics, but they have learnt, learnt a lot actually, and they used to do a lot. Even on the accounting front, also what happens? They have sit along with the financials, and then they. Will so it's now succeeded, and then let us now view the output of it. Let's click on the view output. So click on it. This is open. Thank you. Take the copy of it, and then put on a word file. You see this blank document. I'm pasting it over here. Import document job finished. Status yes. Yes means successful. So here error report generated successfully. What is the thing here? The buyers, is buyer, is not, <laughs> buyer is an active user now, is an active user. So, uh, procurement business unit is what agent name and PRC 10 student. So, agent name hyphen PRC 10 dot student is not a valid name at all. And there is a mistake. Huh? I suspected that it will be giving a problem somewhere here only. It may be a last name, comma, space, first name, or I don't know exactly. Failed to process now. Actually. No records were processed. Okay, check out the procurement view and then the batch ID imports are correct actually. Procurement view, everything is okay. Fine. How to write the, view, the purchase officer's name here? So I will not write last name, comma, space, first name. I will not do it because that is the way we normally write it now. Fine. We will not do it. If it doesn't come, that will be a lab access for you. I forgot that. How to write it actually? <clears throat> So if you go there and then click on done and then see in this place, you go there, click on it. You will now go to what? Manage orders. We'll now see whether it is already at least created or not. Right? I think uh, creation itself has failed actually. Yeah, search for it. What happens? You now see that US 1644416 is coming from the uh, This is a buyer. Right? The PRC 10 student is a buyer. We are now given the buyer now. Right? If you remove the buyer and then make a search now, find where it is coming. Any other thing to reduce it actually? Fine, you don't have any order number. So, click on search now. Uh, what is the thing? Supplier is okay, ABC consulting. 
consulting what happened the consulting the creation date must be 2023 and 2023 is a one today now fine that is now it has now created anything is it okay 2023 na creation date now see yes 2023 it has created it and click on this now and now see this now on it 102 i think it has come now it has come even though it has given an error but it has created it the standard in this brother no fine at yeah, this was level. the old one i think you have the requisition number in this just go up is the requisition number there Oh. Yeah, the same one which we used, right? Ship to AIM, AIM. Ah, ah, ah. AIM hospital, okay. AIM hospital, the one. So we did only ABC consulting, huh? Fine. The ABC consulting. Yeah. Yeah, it's the AIM hospital location. Okay. The older one. So I have given what hundred into two, not two hundred. That is the rate I have given, isn't it? Hundred into hundred quantity into yes. Exactly. So it has not got important at all. Yes, correct. So let's now go on and correct one one more exercise. But if I fail, what happens? It is a lab exercise for you. You please teach me. When I forgot in lecture, when I will do it. And <clears throat> go that you know. <clears throat> you go to this place. I will now open it up. Open it. Or go now. I will now go to the ACM report. Let me open it up again. The last attempt now. So only the buyer name we are getting here. Why they are making it so sensitive? You know, fine. There must be a list of values or you leave it blank. Fine. We are now while importing it. We are going to give it. Now. I want to check the tip on that. How uh, did they give any format on the buyer tip? Yeah. Is now see go there. agent name he says okay. What is that? Only thing is the agent name. No, fine. Go on the agent name. So is the agent name where care buyer name. That's all. If you leave it blank, we will not see what happens. We will not leave it blank because anyhow while importing it, we are now giving it. No, fine. We will not leave it blank. Come here. No, yeah, no. in when do the import we can give default buyer right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There yeah. we are giving it. You now we'll not leave it blank as it is. We're not leaving it blank. So buyer, I'm not leaving it blank. So it's not done. Nothing. I will not do the import. So instructions and and click on generate PO. No, I cannot. I will not say PO import orders two. No. So is the import one? PO import orders two. <clears throat> That is the one. And you will import order the one. I mean, import order the one. Click on save. All the four sheets will be imported. This is what the header. Click on save now. Then uh, lines, then line locations, and then mm -hmm. finally distributions. So all the things will be zipped into one file. Close it. Now. Don't save. Now we'll now go there. Click on. We'll now come to the main one. <clears throat> so I will now bring it over. <clears throat> so we go to the what's called. Where is that here? Manage orders. Everything is there, but where is my ESS job? Come on, I have eaten away them. Oh, you, you. Don't go there too much. So go to the tools, and then I go to the schedule to process. I go to the schedule process. <clears throat> so here I go to the schedule process. Load interface file by import. Load interface file by import. So import process. We drop down and then choose the import orders now. So hundred quantities into two is two hundred actually. <clears throat> Normally, whenever you click on it, in any instance, it takes a longer time to drop down the import process. So go to the search. This import orders. Capital A, capital O, and go to the search. So data file, I will not copy it. So click on upload a new file, <clears throat> browse, and then we will import orders too. And click on. It. So click on submit. It will be running four interface for load interface file for what to be run four times actually. Load interface file will be running four times. <sighs> So 
So nobody has moved past. <clears throat> now all of them have succeeded now. So the main program has to succeed actually. Four sheets of Excel sheet is not enough. It's all succeeded. So let us now do this now. Fine. Say Muruga and then do it. In gold space. Where is the manager orders? No manager orders. And yet, I have now I think I have now import orders. So go to the import orders. Click on import orders. So click on submit and interest. Come on, Muruga. So here we are giving this default buyer right, that it has to take it. Yeah, here the format is different. Last name from the first name. Last name, comma, space, first name. First name. Yeah. Submit. So there also, if you give it like this, it may come off. Last name, comma, space, first name. I think it will accept it. <clears throat> but here it is a uh, mandatory field actually. Why to give that? Not necessary. Because here from a list of value it is coming. So it will not, will not be making any mistake at all. It is not a writing actually from list of value is coming. So we can even communicate. Uh, it will also send an email also. So click on submit. So refresh it. Here it says only succeeded. But in the output, it is not showing all the assets. It has now succeeded. I will not click on the view Click on it, click on it, click on it. So the number of lines also is less actually. Previously, some five lines were there. Now it's a lesser line actually. So batch number, import document finished, status is success fine. Purchase order imported successfully is IEA. It created the order. It has created the order. And job ID is there. So order number is not there. Fine. Oh yeah, order number is also there. So we have one, one yeah, that's the order number. That is the order number. So order number is also there. so leave the buyer blank and then while importing it, you can find that is the best way. Okay. I might have done like this only previously, but I forgot it actually. <laughs> now you go there, click on it, and then you now go to the manage orders area and make a search on this. So we got only one order of time click on search. So it has to come. Second order has to come. Come on. 164417 was there, na? That was no, no, you gave the order number in the search. Uh -huh. removed. So I will not put the buyer over here. Now find was one business unit. Supplier is ABC Consulting. ABC Consulting. I click on search. Now find add here. Now that is these two orders. That is buyer. Well, the next order. Also. We got the second order also. So non as PO. So in this way, what happens? We used to import it. So these are all open PO imports actually. Yeah, open PO imports. So this completes the import of PO. And there are so many imports of that. So CPA import, BPA import, plenty of imports of that. You can. I have not shown you one, and then afterwards the rest you can try that. You can even try this. That is the have access. Now, if you go there and then see this kind of account. So we are now completed the first pillar of procurement actually. The first pillar of procurement is now completed. So we have to begin the second to fifth now. So what I will do is I will not postpone this because this instance is working well actually. And then I will now start order management because I have to run a rapid implementation actually. On the order management front, I have to run a rapid implementation. I need uh, four hours of training on that now. So I will not take it upon that. What is called, I will not show you the model. So 